阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥。陀佛，阿弥陀佛。So today we're going to continue with treaties and response and retributions.、Um, we just、uh, paused for a long while, but we did finish that part that we want to talk about.、Um, today we're just going to go straight into another part of the section three:、uh, transgression of the common people.、Um, I might, you know, keep it a bit shorter because this one is a bit easier.、Uh, part four, section three, part three, and then under part three, there is another part. So they they break it down into smaller pieces so we can digest it easier.、Um, I'm going to categorize it properly. But what we're talking about today is just simply transgression of killing.、Um, Last session we talk about the、um, you know like how we should be respectful of the sages,、uh, not、um, not being、uh, how to say it, not、uh, make jokes of them, and because these people have contributed a lot in terms of、um, education, educating hu-、uh, humanities, bringing the humanities to better directions.、Um, all these are part of the、um, you know the kind of a cause and effect.、Um, Uh, a, a mindset we need to have、uh, whenever we decide on how we treat people,、um, how we deal with people,、um, because、uh, you know you you read what you sow, right? And and you know if you ridicule someone, especially someone with such influence and、uh, on、um, on a lot of people, a good influence especially, then you know you might you know、um, bring trouble to yourself. Not in terms of other people punishing or anything. It's just Basically, you know, you you might you know slander or giving a wrong information to people who are,、um, you know, not so,、uh, were not in in the insight, and you know, it might prevent them from, you know, having a better life or changing their life altogether, because you know, having this right,、um, uh, meeting the right person, meeting the right teachers, or or or, or、uh, endorsing someone who is. Good, giving good service to the people, whatever the service is, educational,、um, business, or anything, and and slandering them will stop them、uh, or delay them from furthering from from serving、uh, from providing the service that people needs,、uh, especially in terms of you know, education, mental health.、Uh, we need someone inspiring, someone who is truly walking the path, walking the talk.、Um, that's why we call them sage.、Uh, in the very least. Good people, right?、Uh, people worthy of respect, and if their cultivation getting better, like very good, they are sage, right? Like、um, recently, we have also have another、uh, venerable、uh, master Xingyun departed from our world, and so we have two very important figures in our you know Buddhist、um, community in the in the whole world that has you know move on to another. Stage, so it's a passing of an era, and if you look back at their ages,、uh, look back at their work in the past, you know, sixty years, past past, what you know they have done, and what kind of imprint they have left behind every one of us in our society, it's it's not、um, you cannot sum it up with few words.、Uh, it's something that is very important. It changes a lot of people's life. There are, of course, situation where people might not earnestly follow the teaching or might misunderstood. But more often than not, the, a lot of people are actually,、um, you know, affected by their examples, by their, you know, persistency in sixty years nonstop of teaching of promoting, you know,、um, education that is, you know, good,、uh, that is helping us, you know, to be a better person. To be better to yourself, to be better to other people,、um, and to improve our quality of life mentally, not just materially, mentally, beyond,、um, you know, beyond the current standards, you know,、um, 
So this this kind of thing, the service they provide to the mankind is important, and hence we should not ridicule or slander them, right? People who do that, and if you can understand uh, the the co- cause and effect, the consequences is serious. It, it does not have to wait until so called uh, the next life. If if you can observe their current trajectories in their current life, you can pretty much see where they're going. You know the 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 state of their mind, the state of their lives. Um, I won't dig too deep into it. It's just a summary of what we did last month. Um, so this section, it's a bit short. Uh, it's just two, two, uh, two sentences. Uh, this is transgression of killing. Um, just a literal sense, right? Uh, um, engaging in any sports they are hunting, uh, you know, like that involves taking lives of the animals, others. Um, or, if so there's an interesting part of it, disturb hibernating animals and insects. So, not just killing, not not just actual f- uh, a form of killing. You're also disturbing the way they live their their habitats. Uh, that pretty much speaks for us, right? The, most of our uh, modern society, right? When we develop, we more or less disturbing it. Obviously, this one refers to um, in the um, smaller scenario, the personal scenario, day to day, where you know maybe in the tree in their backyard, there's a tree where they have nest nested. The bird have nested on it, um, and you know you might you know go in there and disturb their nest when they're hibernating in the winter. So these are kind of things that are also a, trans- a form of transgression because it's quite obvious right you don't want your house to be flipped upside down out of nowhere you right i mean everyone wants a peace and quiet in their own uh, uh, you know refuge from the from the world in a sense and so disturbing being disturbed like that is not a good feeling at all um and and hunting itself uh going back to the first half hunting is obviously it's for killing it's a, it's a form of killing, shooting and hunting. And there are cases where the people actually hunt for food, for survival. That's not so much the case, especially in developed countries, developed areas where transportations and agricultures are very well, you know, um, logistics of transporting foods and the supermarkets and the, um, and the agricultural production is way beyond the needs. Right, they can even sell it, so there's no need to hunt. Right, we're not living in that society, not all of us, of course, but most of us, uh, in in terms of the developed place or developing place, countries. So this case um, actually refers to that, and also there are cases where people do it for sport, sport um, hunting. I think it's quite common. Right, you know, like you, you got a, you know, like I think in the states it's also quite common. There's, there's a reservation where it's open season, right? And then you can, of course, there's a caliber 22 or something. You go in there and start shooting. Obviously, there's a rules and regulations about that. Pretty much, I think in Australia there's the same. Um, maybe not as common, but there, there's a spot hunting, and that thing is not so much. We don't condone that as much because it's. It's killing for the sake of killing. Uh, it's not even for survival. It's not even for food. Um, it's even worse in, 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 in from this point of view, right? So try to avoid it. I think pretty much our audience and most of us don't do that. Um, but that's what it says here. So uh, like in this, this does not start, stop with, you know, hunting anything on the land. What about the seas? I think Fishing is also something um, that people might prone to do as well, especially in Australia, there's a lot of people who like fishing as well. And how to say, um, fishing is also another form, right? Where, um, where you know, the hooks that used to hook the fish, the bait and the hook, um, you know, in order to get fish, you need to, even though you only fish for sport and you will release them to the wild, but think of the hook that you have, uh, the harm that you have caused by hooking their pallet, upper pallet, 
uh, you can imagine just by you know imagine someone else use the needle and just punch through your palate and then coming out from the nose obviously it's not fun it's it's, it's painful so understanding that all right uh, will tend not to do this kind of thing because uh, what goes around comes around right this is what this session is all about you know, what goes around comes around all right um, no one can stop you but do you know there are consequences of the actions uh, of everything we did all right it's not some deity some god someone else uh, pass down the punishment on you it's it's your own doing you know you push and then you get pushed you know action every action incur a reaction so you know, it's first law right so same goes for karma right it, it will come back to you one day so don't do that to yourself so if you can avoid all these actions you should because there's just no reason for us to do any of this there's so many leisure activities all right um yeah that's nothing much to stretch on but also we think about our mentality what kind of mentality do we want to have uh, what kind of person do we want to be this might be small things right you're not you know this are s we, we will ask this question later but think about that kind of mindset right um what it does to you if you if you um how to say disturb the hibernation the the habitats and and actually killing um for fun right it's it's a survival thing it's another 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 kind of question obviously but if it's if it's for fun for sports and recreation there is actually no need for that let you know live and let live right um, everyone have their own little space and respect it and that's quite common sense to everyone so the second half, which is the, the there's only two sentences for this part, um, is to damage or destroy burrows, natural habitats, and bird, bird nest, to hurt pregnant animals and insects, or to break their eggs. So this one goes even deeper. Um, not just disturbing the habitat, you're actually destroying it. So I saw a video of a, um, of a person throwing hot mercury into ants burrows the nest of the ants it's it's a work of art you can think of like that like look at that all the structures and everything but this is destroying people's home and bury them alive in the in the hot molten iron um so right like thinking from this perspective it's not um it's not a good thing to do um you can model you can 3d print you can you know have a uh, how to say different ways of uh, imitating the habitat the structure of the ants burrows or ants nest you don't have to do this kind of killing in order to do that um in chinese there's a saying right um, so like you know like in even in confucius settings right it's it's not it's not just one side like they're not just buddhists say that or oh, this is taoist book as well and in confucius they also mention like do not hurt um the the young links uh that are you know resting in the nest they were waiting for their mom uh, their mother bird to return this all this thing is about uh cultivating a sense of compassion a, a sense of um how to say empathy understanding right even if it's an animal small animal not as smart as you for good noise develop as you they do have their own um things they care about their house their family as well and doing that to art to to some small animal is unnecessary and cruel because they have no harm towards you they do, won't do anything towards you why do that to them just because they are noisy and if they are noisy there are ways to you know help them to migrate or something you can pretty much check online um, i think in australia they quite have a strong consensus on how to take care of wildlife and stuff like that and try to avoid you know destroying the habitats um, like koalas you know like try to restrain your dogs so that it does not harm the koalas etc um, etc 
Um, yeah, pretty much that's it. So, so this is like um, pretty like preliminary steps towards cultivating loving kindness and compassion um, towards small animals. Like if someone can be kind towards small animals, let, what about human, right? Let alone humans. What about in a situation where there are, we can talk about this, infestation, pest, right, that actually disturbs your house. Now that, that comes in a little bit conflict with this situation, isn't it? So we can talk about that. Like, like what should we do, right? If we call pests, pretty much it's a killing. You have to get rid of all the all the nest uh, in the house. What about termite, right? How does this come into factor? How do you get rid of termite? You gotta have to, you know, clean it thoroughly, isn't it? So how how does that work with this clauses, right? Because if we want to practice this, we want to make sure that every scenario we can think about is also covered in there. So, so we can talk about that after this. Okay, so that's it for this uh, part. Uh, we won't go too long on it today because this is a uh, just to get started. It's very light as well. Um, next week we'll talk about something more relatable. So discussion: Do you ever how many animals or insects intentionally or unintentionally when we are young? I should say when you are young, but yeah. Have you guys done that? Yeah, that's why like we, we without knowing this kind of teaching we or you know being aware of it, we thought it's fine, right? No one it's not breaking the law, it's not like you know, we're not harming anyone. We just it's just small things. And this kind of thing accumulates and you know, when when we get the receiving end of this kind of treatment, even though it's a smaller scale, right? it's still very painful and inconvenient and worst case it might get worse and become a disease so in some form or another right this kind of um human condition that we encounter like this kind of uh, ailments pain and all that it's also accumulation of many uh, negative karma that we have incurred uh, whether when we were we didn't know any better or even when we know better we still can't control ourselves and we still commit to it in the context of this um, small animal, as Auntie have uh, kindly illustrated, it's we might not know directly the reason, but somehow you, it's kind of related. Like um, Master Ching Kong's father, I think everyone heard of it, was a hunt hunter. He hunts, right? And he he was uh, Master Ching Kong used to follow his father and get uh, to hunt when he was young, very little. So when he you know, um, his father's about to pass away. His, you know, final condition is painful. Like he roll on the ground like the animals. Um, the way he died is he was actually, you know, so painful that he has to roll on the floor or on the bed. I forgot. He has to roll on the ground and and shriek so loudly, like exactly like the the animal he killed when he was hunting. And. And that also because they didn't have any um, a lot of uh, because they, they haven't been in contact with Buddhism and haven't cultivated enough to how to say dedicate the merits and actually earnestly re, um, how to say uh, relieve this kind of burden. So if we just keep doing that without people teaching us or telling us this is not okay and it will come back to us when we are weak when we, we are at our weakest, especially when we are about to die, we are at our weakest, um, this thing will come, but you know, this thing will come in 10 times the force that we um, uh, exert on. Um, another case is another great venerable, a monk, I think is, I forgot, Guanghua, uh, like it's in China, the uh, very famous Buddhist monk. He was a soldier back in the, um, I think it's, it's, a, it's a back in the nationalist era, um, Republic of China, and he was a general, and as a general, he has quite a bit of power, uh, privilege, and he was stationed in the uh, in a, in an island, um, and in the island there's a lot of chickens, or well, as a livestock, uh, he loves his chicken, and he keeps cooking chicken, and every day every single meal he needs to have chickens, so very soon the whole how to say, 
he keeps ordering his troops, you know, the, his cooks in his um, regiment to cook uh, any dishes to do with chicken with, for him, for every single meal. Less than a month for something. The whole island has been deprived of chicken because he has ate so much of it. And he just realized that after the, after he um, asked the cook, where's my chicken? Why, there, why isn't there any chicken on my um, table? And the cook just being honest and say, sir, you have eaten all of them and the, and the, and the supply from the mainland is not coming anytime soon. All right, there are schedules. So he suddenly had that realization that he has eaten this much. Like you know, how much chicken I have, like thousands, million, uh, tens of thousands of chicken and he has eaten almost everything, right? Because he's the general, right? He gets the best part of it. So he, I don't know, like later he become monk um, when he flew to Taiwan after the liberation and and he become a monk and he's been very earnest in propagation of Buddhism, teaching Buddhism and what happened after is uh, he, when he was showering, he suddenly saw thousands of chicken in front of him. All right, like Im- imagery, like think of you in a chicken farm, but all chickens are pointing at you with their beaks, trying to peck thousands, tens of thousands of chicken pecking at you. So he has that sensation when he's doing the shower, all right? We can say whatever that is, but he did see it in his own eyes, all right? In, 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 in that moment, he witnessed a lot of chickens are pointing at him with that sort of vengeance. He was scared and he fell down on the shower. And that one fall has caused him um, his mobility. He no longer be able to walk since then. He has to rely on the, uh, on the, on the, the cut, not cut wheel. What is that? Rely on the wheelchair, yes, for the rest of his life. I think he was at his 50s or 60s. And he's quite earnest in his cultivations. He's a good monk and does not break any precepts and, and propagates. And I think this story came from Master Chinko himself as well. He, he described a situation where one of his fellow monks, which is the one I'm talking about. And, and he, did try, he did do his best. However, towards the end of his life, his, his, uh, his expression is not so good. He, he keeps pouring out the bubbles. Bai Pao. Uh, and obviously, you know, they, they help him in chanting Amitofo and hopefully go into a better place because first because when he, he didn't know any better when he was general or in the army and he did this kind of deeds, you know, these killings and all that. And afterwards he realized he repent and stuff. Um, think of it as Zhong Zui Qing Bao. That's the saying is the heavy punishment but light I mean heavy transgression but lighter punishment. Um, and Master Chinko has given a very in- insightful response on this, saying that he's a good monk, but um, if he has actually put more effort into, say, maybe propagation of Dharma or um, chan chui, like repentance of the deeds that we've done in the past, you know, clean it out thoroughly, then the effect of our you know negative deeds we've done in the past will be lesser. It will not disappear, but it might be lesser. So, so. This tells us, even though they are small animals, even though they are livestock, well, we we define it as livestock, right? No one, the heaven didn't come down and say, well, there might be some traditions, might think like that, but you know, they are animals and they are bound by their existence. And obviously, um, livestock is meant to be killed and eat, if we define it that way. However, um, if if we can avoid it, we should avoid it. Right? Why bring all this trouble to ourselves, uh, and and add more obstacles on our own path if we can avoid it, right? And if if it's you have no choice in the environment and stuff like that, which is not happening to us, we have a choice. So let's not talk about what ifs. We have a choice. We have the resources. We have this, um, you know, this this facilities then we should reduce the consumption of it. If not, cutting it off entirely of the meat. So that's it. That's pretty much so. It, like, like it might be like in, inconsequential because it's very, you know, small animals, right? It's not breaking the law. It's not 
hurting your family or stuff like that. But this thing will come back, right? Um, and even like example of the monk who actually become a monk and cultivates properly, it's, it's still not, um, you know, it's still need a lot more work to overcome it. So we can use a lot of perspective on this regards. It's best you do, you do it in front of Buddha and Bodhisattvas. I'm not a monk and I'm not a sage. Uh, it's best you do it in front and just repent and just simply, you know, you know the phrase, right? Um, the, the clause and, and dedicate merit to them. And you've been doing the cultivation, chanting cultivation every time. So this, you can group them up into, you know, those um, beings that I have harmed in the past, uh, present and future, uh, past and present. Uh, may they be, you know, relieved from the sufferings of the six realms. So reborn in pure land. So this, this whole thing, which I will actually mention as well in here, is the, the, the heart must be real, must be sincere. Um, it has to be apologetic. It also has to be like affirming reaffirming that you know like no matter how annoying that animal is or like say mosquito or anything I will not do this or obviously right now we know better we won't do the you know removing limbs of the animals or anything we, would, we won't do that so it's already a improvement and all we need to do is just you know dedicate the merit to them uh, don't dwell too much on it like as like Master Chinko has always said, do not dwell too heavy on the past transgression. What we need to do is, what we need to know is thorough, uh, earnestly knowing it's not right. And, and, and our, you know, subconscious conscious is saying, I'm not going to do it again. All right. And this, this one is quite easy. I mean, in, 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 in compared to many other transgression, this one is the one that we, um, will, uh, be able to change quite easily because all we need to do is just be careful. Also, the topic, I forgot about this. What about the pest? What about pest? Huh? Mm. What about cockroach? Uh, how, do we, how do we solve this problem? All right. There are many wheels on this. I clash with my family over this sometimes. All right. Let's say this is agree to disagree. But I have to say that in capacity as a person propagating this one right is if we can you, there's always a way you know there's a way and 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 it's a longer way it's a way that might not work immediately but there's a way and there is a there's a lot of um, website in especially the buddhist website they share experiences of them putting a food outside a dedicated section for them outside when you have a backyard if you don't have a backyard like apartments then it's a bit different because it has a regulations and stuff like that. But if you have a backyard in your, of your own, if you live in the house, you just leave grains and food. Because why do they do that in your house? Do they just do that for fun? Do they just risk their life to annoy you? No, right? Most of them, they just want food. And if you think of that perspective, why, why would you think so much, Dylan? These are just animals, small animals. It's not think so much, it's just... It's not hard to think about. It's not something you need to sit down and write a formula and study four years degree. It's just something you can do in your daily life that you know will improve your your openness of your mind and your heart. Hence, leading to a more compassionate kind of a lifestyle, more empathetic kind of a person. That means you are, you have a much more easy going life in a sense, in mentally, right? And this is something you can do every day. It's a merit on its own. It's a part act of giving. You know, Master Cheng De just mentioned it last week. The six paramitas, six paths of cultivating good deeds, merits, and eventually achievements in Buddhism. You know, giving, the act of giving. It's number one. No matter what religion you are, or even just a normal, it doesn't matter with or without, the act of giving is always... A good thing, good place to start with. It it cuts off your greediness. So this, what what, what is a few crumbs of breadcrumbs to you, right? It's very simple stuff, and you you will accumulate marriage just by doing that. Just leaving a thought for little ones. 
put it at the side at a corner like my parents house have a, co- a courtyard uh, I admit I didn't do it <laughs> but um but if you actually own your own properties or you if you're in capacity of doing it you can put a bit of a grain and put it at, at one at the further corner well, safe enough don't, don't let it expose to the element just be kind be considerate you know find a place that are convenient for them uh, not so dangerous for them as well because they also have a prey predator relationship if you think like that right yeah but like especially for us you want to cultivate buddhism right and buddha does not discriminate human and and ants right they treat them as the same thing obviously they are different in dynamic power humans are humans it's cognitive and stuff ants are very trapped in their own mindset uh, after seven buddhas have come to the world buddha has laughed at the end and in a way saying this end has to do the same end that seven buddhas ago and each buddha takes how long to, to appear in the world so they're very attached i have diverged a bit the point is um, leave a little bit space of thought for them leave some food in your court yet if you can um, without causing trouble to the neighbors and see how it goes if push come to show you have to do pest controls and you have no choice absolutely or you out of your element this is not a property people's going to do that you can chant amitofo pray to the buddhas and bodhisattvas they know and just pray that they will inform the animals to evacuate the premises give them a notice and i'm pretty sure they're even better better like tapejo you know tapejo is one of the best this is a mantra of great compassion it's by Bodhisattva Guan Yin, who is very compassionate. And you can use that as a sort of like a communication, like a translator, to reach out to these people in the animal realm. And it will reach them. All right. This is very commonly practiced as well. It's something I need to pay attention. I know about this, I didn't practice enough. So, it, but it's like a warning telling them we're going to do pest control in one week, three days. Please give them at least one week. Um, please evacuate if you can. Right? You already give them a notice, early notice. You can't talk to them, right? <laughs> so you need to rely on Buddha and Bodhisattvas. All right? They will do that, obviously. They are part of the sentient beings. So, so doing that, all right, will relieve you. Of, okay, people might say, what about you relieving yourself of your uh, are you doing all this just to make yourself feel better? So what? It does make myself feel better. Yeah. So I'm doing that. I don't want to have mental health problems. So what? Right. If you don't believe that set of understanding, it's fine. But practicing this also a courtesy, courtesy towards your own conscience as well. Like I don't care about that. Yeah, it's fine. This is a free world. Everyone can have their own. I'm talking about like different kind of people. There are many people and they there's only so much people can take this so i'm just sharing these kind of tips these tips are not for me from me these are share well common towards the buddhist communities uh just put it out here all right so there are many ways guys there uh, you know just warn them through the medium buddha and bodhisattva is the best medium don't need to don't need to do any weird stuff just chant amitofo or if you have this mantra just chant the mantra all right, and say, dear compassionate Guan Yin, Bodhisattva Guan Yin, please inform the te- uh, tenant, the residents, the uh, the anim, um, the residents of this um, property, the non-human residents of this property, to evacuate. You can be pro- specific: the cockroaches, the the Bodhisattva cockroaches, the Bodhisattva whatever, you know, the the cricket. Oh, sorry, I forgot the name. To evacuate this property uh, in seven days in seven days otherwise you know either they will pass control or my family members gonna put poison at the corner um may they not fall into the trap may they evacuate the property may they find a better place without disturbing humans and without being disturbed do that all right and in your capacity like i say you can put rice and food for these uh, little animals i know cockroach is a bit disgusting uh, to look at but this is also product of karma cause and effect no one wants to be cockroach if they have a choice <laughs> um i'm going a bit far but yeah if you want to go deep 
this relates to us you know who what kind of person we are right small it's, it's the small things that count right the small thoughts that matters um we prioritize on important stuff but we also cannot overlook this little thing at the side because it will also affect our character as a person as a practitioner even as a practitioner we need to be even more sensitive this is something that relates to you in your future when you become a bodhisattva the more compassion the more how to say live and let live if you leave let people a bit more like within your power give them a bit more pathway to flee to escape in future when you need it trust me people will give you a pathway when you need it to escape all right we cannot guarantee that we will be safe 100 percent. look at COVID. look at turkish and syrian earthquake we dedicate our merit today as well to them their earthquake has taken 30,000 lives 20 to 30,000 that's it just like that that most of them are good people normal people getting by their lives right right and that's it gone just like that under the debris so this is this is a world built on foundation on sand a bubble the bubble will pop one day however be careful on this mindset it's not telling you oh it's all sad and grim and doom it is what it is because of a lot of cause and effect which is complex that forms it means you have an understanding that this can change does not change immediately does not suddenly 100 percent turn around the only way you can do that is everyone suddenly in for no longer want to think about wandering thoughts suddenly they were like nope i'm going to chant amitofo maybe for that one moment it becomes pure but the reality is everyone has a lot of thoughts a lot of mindset a lot of past that drags forward to the present and the present they did will always carry on to the future so hence this thing happens we just need to appreciate it understand that this is the reality and do our best in our capacity because you know a lot of people don't know you who know has even more choices to make has even more responsibility as well and that is empowering as much as it's harrow hallowing harrowing or hallowing i don't know as much as it's um a bit like we're taken aback you also have more power to decide where you want to go in your life because your mind no longer stuck in uh, you know this common sense in of our world that, that was trapped in that short-sightedness you have a longer better out, outlook you have a you have more equipment to overcome the depressions or the um, low points of your life because you understand it's a cycle right so putting back understanding this um, perspective then we go back to this simple you know teaching of no harming um, don't harm the animals birds nest then it makes sense perfect sense it's just don't do that because you know if your wife is pregnant or if you're pregnant do you want someone to you know nudge you the side or push you down no right simple they have babies you have babies of course there are cases where it's a pest and you have no idea then all you can do is pray and and and, and do your best to inform them move away and if you're really sincere, your intensity of your thought is strong, you'll reach them. Most of them will escape, right? You get, you do your best and then just move on. So yeah, that's it. I mean, there we go, 8.55. Uh, me to for Ah, me to for Ah, me to for Ah, me to for a mi to fo 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 may the merits and virtue dedicated from this uh, a crew from this world dedicated to the victims of the Syrian and Turkish earthquake that happens last week. Um, may all these beings that perish in these unfortunate disasters 
um, be reborn into a pure land, if not better place. Uh, may their negative karma be resolved uh, quicker uh, and no longer suffer from this incident, etc., or any unforeseen, unforeseen circumstances. Um, may also the Dharma practitioners of uh, the whole world or the whole Dharma realm, or ten Dharma realms, uh, be able to attain uh, Anuttara Samyasa body, the ultimate perfect enlightenment, uh, and then return to the world, to the, all these realms to help the beings in need. Uh, may also Alison Chen's conditions getting better, uh, no longer suffer from a lot of these um, conditions. Also may all the Dharma brothers and sisters uh, in Sydney, New South Wales, in, this, uh, in the youth group and in across the world, um, have a, you know a, a better life and a better quality of uh, cultivations. Uh, may they improve drastically on their uh, every aspect of their life. May the merits and virtue accrue from this work. Adorn the Buddha's pure land. Repay the four kinds of kindness above and relieve the sufferings of those in the three paths below. May those who see and hear of this all bring forth the heart of understanding and compassion and leave the teachings for the rest of this life. Then be born together in the land of ultimate bliss. Namo Amitofo. Thank you everyone for today. Thanks for the question, guys. Please keep asking.